Live? Ah, live. We're live, apparently. Wow. So welcome back, um, the Juma people, to uh, Gen Beyond 2020 in the very special and hopefully uh, very unique online edition, um, at least in an, in a replacement for the actual event way. Um, in case you just joined us, um, we are right in the middle um, of this uh, online conference, um, not only metaphorically, but really we're in the middle. 12 hours are now over. We have another 12 hours to go. Um, we're all full of energy. Um, Robert is not, but that's okay because he already had a 10 hours straight moderation part. Uh, but that's why I'm not here. My name is David. Um, I'm going to uh, bring you through the afternoon, at least the thing that's afternoon here in Germany. Um, before we jump into the beauty of custom fields, uh, let me just briefly mention a big thank you to our sponsor, Plesk, uh, which is helping us making this online conference happen. Um, let me please remind you that we would highly appreciate your help um, financing or compensating at least partly the big financial loss that our association had after canceling the in-person event of JEP that was supposed to happen in Lisbon right this weekend. Uh, so if you have a few bucks, um, please hit jnbeyond.org and click on the donate button. Um, any help is highly appreciated um, and is going to help us making another jab happen next year in the proper in-person cheers made be away. Um, and last but not least, um, if you have anything to share on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever those things are called, uh, please make sure to use the JEP20 hashtag. And also, uh, I asked it in the session before, um, please send us a selfie of yourself or a photo of yourself in front of the screen so we can get an idea how being part of JAP actually looks like for you guys. Uh, we would highly appreciate that. Okay, Mark, um, yeah. stage is yours again. You're going to show us some custom field magic. Uh, we already quickly discussed it in the break that it's probably the most game-changing feature that Joomla had since the introduction of multi-language. Um, so uh, the stage is yours. I'm curious what you're going to show us. Okay, thank you, David. And thank you to all the team of JNB on for organizing this uh, virtual event, because uh, I'm well aware that uh, it's, it's a huge, jo a huge job. Um, and, and besides the fact that we were all very happy to meet in Lisbon. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's, it's nice at least that we can meet virtually uh, or around the globe. Um, so um, actually, um, before starting, if I, if I may, uh, I'm sharing the screen here. We were supposed to have our own Joomla day French speaking Joomla Day two weeks ago, two weeks before Jay and Beyond uh, in Brussels. So we had to postpone it. And hopefully, beginning of October, second and third, um, if everybody can go out again, uh, we'll be able to, um, to make it uh, an in person uh, Joomla Day. So you're all very welcome because um, for the first time, it won't be in France, Paris, or whatever. Uh, for the first time, the French, so-called French Joomla Day, in fact, French-speaking Joomla Day, will be out of France in, in Brussels, Belgium. So on that occasion, we'll have a series of uh, sessions in English so that uh, we can also welcome all our neighbors, all our friends from Germany, Netherlands, or England, whatever, uh, or any other countries, of course. Um, so feel free to join us on the Joomla Day uh, Beginning of, beginning of October in, in Brussels. Will, um, will, will there be chocolate and fries if I travel to Brussels? Uh, we can organize that. <laughs> well, and, 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 that, that, that makes yeah. that whole thing a lot more appealing. And beer, of course. Okay. Yeah, and beer. So ch course. chocolate, fries, and beer. Um, dear yeah. audience, if, if, you, if you haven't made your travel arrangements so far, uh, you now have the reason to go there. Exactly. And Brussels is quite central, so everybody can get there quite uh, quite quickly from, from neighboring countries. So there was a, a little word um, aside. Let's go. Uh, let's dive into the presentation. So uh, now speaking about custom fields, I'm a huge fan of custom fields and sharing my enthusiasm. And even before starting, I would like to thank Alan Moritz. So he's a Swiss German-speaking Joomla 
uh, and he's a father of the custom field. So originally it was a, an extension of his, and he, he, he took the time to put it into the core of Joomla. And as, as you said, David, it's really a, a game-changing feature in, in Joomla. Um, so let's dive into it. Uh, if you want to have the slides, uh, just go to slides.wordweb.be, slides.wordweb.be. Uh, and you will have all the slides of these presentations and even other ones if you go on the next page. Um, so let's start it. So my name is uh, Mahd Um And so the goal of this presentation is to create, we will play with custom foods, and in particular because Joomla comes along with, I think, 15 or 16 uh, native custom feeds uh, like text, image, list, uh, whatever. Um, but then you can also um, custom feeds are just little plugins, so it's very easy to develop your own. Even if you are not an expert developer, you just uh, copy paste the code of some other custom field. It's very easy to customize uh, or to create new custom feeds, and that is how you have YouTube custom fields. Uh, or open street map custom fields. And that is a topic of the day because um, actually, in many cases, the custom fields are quite obvious to use. In an article, you enrich and you structure the content so that if you have uh, a film festival, for example, you will, you will add a producer, year, the video, or whatever information, uh, the actors, etc. But that's it. You, you you just put the information on each article and and that's finished. The reason why I'm speaking now specifically uh, over OpenStreetMap is that you can go one step further. It's not just showing a map on a given article. Is that when you think of it, you say, oh, it would be nice to have a module, for example, a map showing all my articles on the map. So this is the goal of this presentation to see how to use an open street map custom field. Um, we'll assign it to one or several categories of articles. Uh, so in our example, well, it, it can be members, events, or whatever. Uh, so each article will be geolocalized. And based on this, we will create a global view, a global open street map module showing all the locations. That's the main goal, but actually there is also a side goal uh, of, for this presentation is that maybe you've never played with overrides, right? Or actually in this case, it's more alternate layout. So alternate layout is just like an override. Uh, it's just that you're not overriding a view uh, for all the articles or all the modules uh, of a certain type. Is just that you give an alternative so that you can choose in a list and say, oh, for this one, I won't use the regular one, the native one, I will use uh, mine. Um, so you're not overriding all views, but just a selection of views that you can configure. Uh, so this means that even if you're not a coder or a developer, you will see that Joomla makes it easy, very easy to customize any view. So even if you've never seen PHP before today, which could happen, uh, don't hesitate. You can make it. You will see this is a, a very powerful example with this OpenStreetMap module, a powerful example, but still very accessible for people, uh, even with no uh, great, huge expertise in, in coding or whatsoever. Um, so we'll start with a simple, multiple markers map. Uh, let's show an example. So for this, I have built a little demo website, so you can access it live now on joomlacustomfees.org. And then the language uh, English, so slash en for English. So joomlacustomfees.org. I cannot ask permission to open street matters uh, to have a domain name containing Joomla, but I hope I won't get fined for that. Um, so on this website, we, we, we have the live demo of all what we, what, what we will see here. And OK, there is even more on this website. Um, so let's first show the basic example. 
So open OSM stands here for not for open source matters, but for open street map in this case. So the first map we will create, multiple markers map, is this one. So simply it's it's a list of uh, Joomla days and Joomla user groups, right? Uh, that I've gathered. So this will be the first step. A simple map, so you can zoom, you can, I mean, it's a regular map, right? Just like you have Google Maps, this open street map is we're all in favor of uh, open source, right? Joomla is open source as well. Um, so it's a good reason to use open source solutions. So that's the basic map. And the first time I made this, I was already very happy. Oh, great, I can build a map with several markers and each marker has a tooltip. And if I click on the tooltip, let's just say this one, I have the title and the link to the article. Excellent, it is precisely what you usually want to have, right? So that's the first basic example. But then you're so excited seeing that, you think, hmm, it would be nice to have different colors for the map markers, for the little yeah, map markers here. Different colors according to the type of uh, article, to the article category. Like here, I've mixed uh, Joomla days uh, in Germany, for example, Netherlands and France. There's two Joomla user groups. Ah, it would be nice to have different colors. Can we do that? Actually, it's just an, a few extra lines of code, right? So step by step, we'll build on that to improve it. So this was the basic map. Afterwards, we'll say, oh, let's use our own map marker and uh, let's make it different according to uh, the different uh, article categories. And also the next step was to say, oh yes, but just showing the title is maybe a bit too short. Maybe I want to add precisely some other information, maybe the first character of the intro text, or maybe some other custom fields. Like here, I have created a custom field country for each event, so that it shows here, and I've added the custom field in the tooltip. So actually, that, that, that was my step two. I was even more excited, right? I was already happy with uh, the first map, and this was the second generation of the map, because, oh, that's nice, but actually, when you zoom out, also have one in Greece, you understand why I specifically mentioned Greece here. Uh, so actually, when you zoom out, I thought, mm, it should be nice that uh, we can, if we could cluster the different, but oh, I wouldn't know at first how, how to play with clustering, um, and that is, what we will see last. So here you have clustering, right? If I zoom in Belgium, then those two points uh, come together, but come apart. If I unzoom, they come together. If I unzoom further, right? Uh, Netherlands and Germany uh, merge and et cetera, et cetera, right? So this will be the final step and also uh, well, we continue enriching the tooltip so that we have uh, text and the info in it. The last thing is that I wanted to say, mm, okay, that's really nice, but it would be even better if we could filter our categories on the map like this, so that I can say, I'll zoom a bit more, I could say, oh, I only want to see jugs or I only want to see Joomla days, right? Here I only have two categories, like that to okay, any use case you, you have. So this will be the, our final step, right? Um, so coming back to the slides. Uh, so we'll start with a simple multi-markers map, because the idea is to show how simple it is. Just a few lines of code in an override, and even if you've never played with overrides, you'll see that it's super easy. And then we will end up because step by step we improve on it. Okay, then there are more lines of code, but it's still very readable. We have multiple markers, of course, but different markers for each category, a tooltip, but uh, that we customize with title and link, 
also with the intro image, intro text, or even custom fields, as I said. Um, you will add clustering and even uh, layers so that we can have filters on the map. So, um, okay, the slides are very self-explanatory. Uh, so uh, I've even put uh, little uh, animated GIFs, little videos of uh, what I've just shown live. So I will skip those slides for the rest of the presentation. That's the link I mentioned to the online demo so that you can play with it. And um, how it all started, sorry, because since I'm a big fan of uh, testing fields, um, sometimes uh, I get contacted by, by people who will ask, oh, Mark, do you know a solution for this or that? Um, and one day, a guy from France contacted me saying, hey, look, um, I've done something because I needed map with multiple markers. And so I said, oh, can you share me your code? I'm curious. And that's how I realized that it was really, I had never played with maps, right? Um, that it is, I've seen that it was using the leaflet library. Um, so I just went to the website and had a look. I had no idea before that how, how to build a map. And um, if you go to, well, their website, I will take the examples, it's better. So I had a look at this and okay, I clicked on the first link and I saw, okay, if you want to build a map on your website, actually just put a link to uh, the CSS. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> you put the link to a script. Okay, that's easy, just copy paste. You create, uh, in HTML, you add a div and you give an ID um, to your div. Okay, that's easy. Um, Okay, of course, in CSS, you make sure that uh, it has a certain height. So again, that's easy. And you just initialize the map saying that uh, it is centered around a certain latitude and longitude. So here we are in London and a certain level of zoom. And actually, basically, that's it. You, you, you just um, add a few lines just to say which uh, this can be adapted, but which styles you want. So uh, there are different styles for the maps, like the Google uh, style or Mapbox, or there are different styles for the tiles that you have on a map. So these are just the lines with some extra uh, information. Okay, it's just a copy paste again. And now I say, okay, and how do you add a map marker on a map like this one here? Actually, it's just this, just saying, uh, well, the latitude and longitude of that, of that point on the map, and you say add to map. Oh, so easy. And if you want to add a circle, uh, it's barely more complicated, right? It's just a few lines to say the color or whatever. That's the uh, red circle there. Well, I, I won't need that. It's just to say that, um, okay, you could add a polygon, whatever. So. Actually, I really realized that it was super easy to create your own map in HTML um, and so in Joomla. Uh, and coming back to the tutorial, I saw another example, which was interesting, markers with custom icons. Oh, but that would be nice to have different icons according to, uh, is it a Joomla day or a Joomla user group? Uh, and I said, oh, but uh, probably the code is more complicated, but actually not really. It's just um, a few a variable where you say, okay, there is a green icon and you put the link to, you give the name of the, of the image, right? Uh, and when you want to add three points instead of one on your map, well, actually, uh, instead of having one line, you have three. So actually, multiple marker is super easy. It is as easy as putting a single point on the map. So seeing this on the Leaflet uh, JS website, I thought, okay, let's try to play with it and um, let's see what we can do with Joomla. So the first thing was to um, I didn't want I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so 
I want to see, um, do we already have open street map custom fields out there? And I found three uh, different custom fields by three different people. So I will mention them both, each has its strengths, right? And each is keeping uh, improving. So um, I will mention the three of them. The first one is uh, part of the pack of advanced custom fields containing about like uh, 25 plus different custom fields so very handy by Passos Marinos from Greece that's why I was mentioning Greece on on, on my little uh, map uh, example so I just click um, on the link so that you can see so it's on tassos.gr and if you see free versus pro uh, of course, there's a pro version where you have even more, but you have plenty of things. URL, telephone, YouTube, Google Maps, Things Maps, OpenStreetMap, Vimeo, DailyMotion, SoundCloud, Twitter, Facebook, uh, True Force, Time Picker, Currency, HTML5 video, HTML5 audio, uh, whatever, progress bar, download button, etc., etc. So you even have extra ones or maybe extra options when you have the pro version. But for what we need, the free version is just is just fine. We have the open street map there, uh, which is free, and you also have like uh, 25 other ones which you can use. Um, so that was the first possibility. Uh, we have another one by uh, Norton Lovraff, so um, a guy from the north of France. I just click on the link so that you can see very quickly. So. It's also uh, very powerful because it, it is part of, of a full, well, you can use it as a standalone uh, custom field, of course. But uh, Nordmograph has other extensions uh, allowing to play with those custom fields. So you can just have a look for yourself. I'm not here to promote uh, anybody or anyone, but uh, you have very powerful extensions coming, coming along with that. Um, that's the second one. I found an, uh, yet another one by GMAP FP. So also a guy from France. Uh, okay, the link I put was in French, but uh, right, you see it's a regular open street map custom field that you can download for free. It's just 10 kilobytes, right? Um, so we have different possibilities and I had to make a choice. So. Uh, for the sake of this presentation, I used the uh, the one by Tassos, and the reason is quite uh, practical, is that the one by Tassos, so far, um, is still like that today, uh, just write in database the latitude and longitude, nothing else. So it's easy, because in our example, uh, especially showing for first time, people who have no experience with uh, overrides or with custom fields, well, it's easier if the custom field only contains latitude and longitude instead of being an array containing different variables like uh, extra information, like uh, a text, a zoom level, a personalized marker, uh, et cetera. So we will, it will be easier for us to manipulate this custom field. But very soon, uh, Tassos will should publish uh, a new version, uh, and so in that case there will be more options. So it will also become an array. But here I already give the answer of what it will look like. Um, so in my code after wherever I have just one line, you will replace it by the first two lines here, uh, because the custom field will also contain the tooltip. Uh, uh, not only the latitude, but it's the only change. So it will be as simple as we just change the, those two lines. Um, now, what I wanted to do at some point, as I mentioned, I wanted to have my own uh, map marker image. And there were two things. I wanted to have transparent ones because it's nicer than uh, non-transparent, non of course, but also, um, I wanted to have SVG, right? Two reasons. So SVG is a, a vector image. And uh, the fact that it's a vector, it means that the image is always perfect. 
need. It's, it's not pixels, right? Uh, so whatever the size you will configure, is it a huge or tiny? It could all be, always, be, always be very neat on your screen. And also, it makes it very easy, even without Photoshop or whatever, to change colors. Because what is an SVG file? Actually, it's a text file. If you never realize that, just open an SVG image in your notepad, for example, you will see it's just text. So in, 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 in this text, you see color, uh, and you see the uh, hexadecimal um, code for the color. And you just change the color. So it means that if you're for your map marker, you don't have to use uh, Photoshop, or whatever. You just edit the text file and change the color. And so you have five different colors for your uh, the same image. In my case, but use whatever source. Uh, I just search on, on, I just Googled and I found their website where I could find a map marker which I would uh, like. Oh, now, um, we have everything, we are ready to start. Let's see um, what it gives on a real Joomla website. So in the present demonstration, I've already created the categories. We'll make two categories, the Joomla days and the Joomla user group. So um, just to show this, because it's, it's um, already in there. So if I go to my website, Joomla custom Tools if I have to begin, sorry about that. Okay. okay, so I have um, different categories and I created a category Joomla events. There's two subcategories Joomla user groups and Joomla days. I see that I have two articles in Joomla user groups for Joomla days. And if I click on it, uh, I must say that this, this block here with the, the numbers. Uh, was created by Peter Martin after we had a coffee at some Joomla day. And I said, oh, it's very sad that we don't have that uh, in Joomla 3 because we used to have that in Joomla 1. In Joomla 3 or 5, I don't remember. Um, I said, oh, yes, that's true. Uh, we could test that if I uh, develop it. So that's how uh, this came to, to life in the category view to have those. Um, those uh, little pills with the numbers. So now if I click so, on- So if, if, if you want to have a feature added to Joomla, you, all you have to do is to walk up to Peter Martin, right? That's the lesson learned. Uh, not only to Peter Martin, but to, uh, to, go to, <laughs> to, go, to go to Joomla user group, to go to um, Joomla days. And uh, yeah, I, I was a newbie, a total newbie. I think it was my first Joomla event ever. Um, but I went and okay, I, I saw Peter in front. There were not many people speaking English. So I said, okay, he's having a coffee uh, alone. I'll just have a chat with him. And just, yeah, that's how it came. So uh, sometimes, yeah, it's worth exchanging with people. Uh, sometimes there are good ideas that come out, sometimes bad ideas, but uh, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, so if you click on, uh, um, on, on, on the pill, then we already have the list of articles already filtered, all the published articles in the category Joomla Days. Um, so let's take an example. I click on Joomla Day France here. And um, since I have custom fields, uh, I see them on a special tab, right? Which I've called Joomla Events. But before doing that, I will show you what I've made because I created a field group. So in content field groups, um, I created a group Joomla event because when you create a group, uh, you can have, a, you will have a tab for every group. So it is better if you have many, uh, if you want to have a name for your tab instead of just custom fields uh, or fields, uh, or if you have so many custom fields that you want to organize them by tabs, that's how you do, you create a field group. Then in the different fields, as I was saying, I installed um, the, uh, the ones by uh, Passos Marinos, so um, advanced custom fields. So that's the open street map one that I created. And okay, I just said, I don't want it to, apply to all categories. It's just for the category of articles, Joomla events, right? 
Um, fear groups. Um, the fear groups is what I've just mentioned. Uh, I want it to appear on the tab for Joomla events, right? And for the rest, I've done nothing. I'll just say that my map is 100% width instead of uh, 400 pixels, for example. Um, I say the default level for the zoom. Um, and excellent also in this, um, in this custom field by Tassos is that you can show the address input because in some of the custom fields you have to know the latitude and longitude to find it by yourself here you will see we will just type the address as as, as a as a human being and since mm, a few days i think there is an extra uh, option here to put the default map coordinate so that if you're in belgium for example you could put brussels so that the people adding new uh, articles will have a map centered on, on your city, on, on your country, on your region, whatever. Um, so nothing more than that. So coming back to my articles, um, uh, was to the, the categories. Um, in the Juma days, if I edit the Juma de France, that's a basic usage of custom fields, right? Um, just go to the, if, if you've never played with that, just go to the edition of uh, April, so not the last one, the one before, of the Joomla Community Magazine. Uh, I have a link there in my presentation. So now that I edit my article, I have a tab Joomla events, and um, it was in Paris last year, as it is Paris, right? Um, and this year it will be in Brussels. So as I was saying, in Tassos custom field, it's very easy because uh, this year it will be in Brussels, at a, a school called ECAM. So I will just type uh, ECAM in Brussels. Okay, I type ECAM Wolubi, which is the, in Brussels, is a part of Brussels. And I directly have the suggestion. So very easy. And it has converted here my address into the latitude longitude. And in the database, it's only the latitude and longitude which will be safe, right? I can even clear so that if I change mine, I say, no, we don't have the address yet, I can clear it. Um, I save it. Let's see what the website looks like now. Okay, now the Joomla event, which was in Paris, is in Brussels. Okay. That's fine. Um, so that's a basic presentation about how the custom fees and articles work. So now let's see our open street map. Um, actually, when I first played with that, um, I used to use uh, the articles newsflash module because if you have a look um, at the Joomla community magazine I was mentioning of last month, so here you have a step-by-step -step uh, explanation uh, about how it works and it also explains if you need to make overrides it also gives um, the line of code somewhere right um, right here okay it just there but we'll come back to that in the presentation there's just one line of code in php to say echo so that it means display display for this item the custom field x x being the number so maybe it is 5 maybe it is 13 it depends how many custom fields you created and you take the value so actually it's just one line of code to display your custom field um and for this article that i translated to english for the magazine actually i should thank uh sam Lepocher from the netherlands uh who wrote this originally in Dutch. Um, so, as I was saying, actually displaying a custom field in any view uh, in PHP is just this single line of code. So if I replace X by the ID of my custom field, in my case, uh, I go to the fields, the ID of OpenStreetMap custom field is nine, right? Here, the last column is the ID. So just replace X by nine and it would display the map. This works automatically, this code. For many views, like uh, 
the article views or the blog view uh, or the uh, for the modules in the articles news flash module um, if you enable this option in the module trigger plugin events if you do that then it will um, trigger the GSA fields or the custom field variable uh, in, in, in the code. If you set it to no in the configuration of the module, in the option of the modules, then your code won't work. Um, but for this presentation, I don't want to use articles use flash. It would have been easy because then I can uh, enable this option, uh, trigger plugin events. Uh, but there are too many options um, that I don't need, like if I go to the modules, um, news flash, right? Um, news flash is nice, but I don't need an option for tags, show intro image, yes, no. Uh, then I have a choice, show article titles, yes, no. Uh, this famous trigger plugin events I was mentioning. Uh, show last separator, show intro text, read more link, yes, no, number of articles, but that one is useful. Features, articles, order, direction, etc. This is too much, so for, for it would be overkill because when you make an override or an atomic layout, your starting point contains too many lines of code that you don't need. So that is why I prefer to start from modules, article latest, because it's much simpler, right? There are less options. So let's take, um, yeah, it's article latest, latest. That's an example. Well, the only options is just setting the category. We need that, obviously. The count. And if you don't, if you want to show all your points, all your articles, you set the, the, the number to zero, right? Otherwise, if I set five, it will be only the five first articles. And then, okay, I can also uh, filter on featured order and authors. I don't really need those in my case, but you see the code will be lighter because we have less options. But the thing is, sorry, the thing is uh, that we, um, oops. But the thing is, the only drawback was that uh, the custom fees were not readily available. So having a discussion with uh, Alexandre Elysée, uh, he, he said, oh, but that's easy, Mark. Very okay, easy for him, it was not for me. But he gave me those two lines of codes. He said, okay, just put that in your in your code and, and then you have access uh, to the, all the custom fields, even by name, um, in in any of your of your overrides. Okay, great. So uh, I Put the link here for those who are curious. So with this, we have everything we need um, and we'll see how it works. So let's say if you've never made an override, I won't be too long on that because otherwise we will go uh, beyond. If you go to extensions, templates, usually you go on template styles, right? That's where you configure your, your, your templates. But if you go to templates, then you see here I will use Protostar. I like Asteroid, but for this demonstration, we just use the basic uh, uh, Protostar template. So you open it and you see things that you have maybe never seen. Uh, is that actually you can edit any file of your template directly from the backend, right? Most of the time I do it from my FTP uh, because it's easier, but you can do it directly from, from Joomla itself. So this means that I can create an override. And I want to create an override for, I was saying, article, uh, the module article latest. So here, mod article latest. I just click on it, right? And I've got a message, override created in templates, protostar, HTML, mod article latest, successfully created. So you can go by FTP or directly here so if i go in uh, i'm on the editor tab i go to html um, and article latest so i i've already before the session uh, made several overrides no, normally you would just have the this default.php file created right now 
Um, so, but actually, I don't want an override. If I click on it, it is the code, the native code of Joomla, right? Um, but actually, I want an alternate layout. So I don't want my code to apply all the time in Joomla, only when I want it, when I configure it in the module tree. So I will rename this file and call it app 20. This is the end on 20. Rename. Okay. And um, let's say we just, even if you don't understand PHP, never mind, easy. Um, you understand, actually, it will loop through the article. If you say for each article, right? Basically, that's what it means. So I will just add a line and type hello, Jap20, hashtag 20. I will save that. Now, if I uh, go to the back end, right, in the modules, if I create a new module, article latest, what I've just done, well, I first give the page a, a name, jab 20, uh, a position, which position is it? Uh, um, I don't remember the positions in. Um, Seven is on the right. I've selected category. These are the basic parameters, right? Even several categories if I want. The count, I want to put in zero so that it shows all. Okay, I'm happy with that. And the fact that I've created an alternate layout means that here on the advanced, I can choose the layout I want. So I already had built the other ones. Here I will choose chat 20. If I do that, I will... Uh, there's many assignments. Yeah, it's on all pages, so it can show. Okay, I save. Uh, and then if I've done everything correctly, yeah, here. English, uh, the same. Uh, we see, instead of just showing the list, as does the regular module, for each element of the list, it has added hello, uh, GMB on 20, right? So this is just to prove the point that uh, just by with my override, just by editing here, I can do whatever I want to customize the view. So let's see the presentation further. If if, if it's your very first experience with overrides, uh, this code can be useful. The print R because it will show everything which is available in in an article. So let's say I. Uh, copy paste this and I will put it here uh, in my override so let's say that instead of the original code which is a list of article with bullet points I just put this I save I go back to the website uh, back to the website I refresh right actually well sorry it's on the right position um, so it's a bit narrow. Actually, you see that the first article has ID 15, its name is Joomla Day Greece, the intro text is empty, uh, etc. And you have all the available variables. Here it's a bit um, too narrow to read, but that's a very handy thing to uh, know what you have uh, at hand, right? Uh, ready to be used in, in your code. So now, the simple override. Our first case, the simple map. What do we need? Um, actually, uh, going back to the leaflet.js website, um, we just put this. We we say, okay, I'll put the title. Uh, I make the link to the CSS and to the JavaScript. I put the div with the map saying that I want a 100% width and a certain height, okay? And uh, I put the script. I say that uh, I, I, I want the initial map to be centered around that latitude longitude. Uh, it's just a copy paste, right? The only thing is that I want to loop. So this famous line I mentioned for each article, right? There, I will adapt the code of uh, leaflet.js to make, to use this loop to say, okay, for each article, I will add the point, I will add the coordinates. 
So, uh, for each article, I will use the little trick uh, by Alexandre to get my custom fields available in this view, because by default they were not available in this module. And then there's a little trick here. Um, I transform it so that I can directly use the name of the custom fields instead of their IDs. And then I just say, okay, uh, basically you read it like it, it would be English almost, even if you're not a PHP expert, right? You say, okay, if it if the field called OpenStreetMap, if if it's row value, if it's not empty, then and it's just the L marker um, add to map, it's a little line add to map here that we have. So it's just the line that we had on the reflet.js website that I've um, adapted so that uh, I echo, so I display uh, the latitude longitude. So I've what, what was on the example as latitude and longitude, I've put in this little code to, this, to, um, to uh, inject it. Then the bind pop-up allows us to create the little uh, tooltip. So there I say, okay, I will put a link, uh, a link, to um, the article title, right? And I use HTML special car so that I get rid, as explained in the comment, uh, of special characters uh, that could break. So doing this, well, I just go back to the website. This is what I've, you just have to copy paste, right? Um, open street map, I take. So this is what we have here, exactly the same code. So all you have to do, if even if you're not an expert, you copy paste it here uh, in my openstreetmap.php file. And if I do that, uh, we'll see what it gives. It gives the simple map here, right? Different points. And in the back end, where does it come from? I will just um, disable this new module we created. So the basic one, uh, OpenStreetMap basic. It's an article latest module. I've selected my two article categories and I've chosen the layout OpenStreet basic, right? In the menu position of banner. Um, Okay, and that's just simply how we have um, created this map. So if, all you have to do is copy paste, just read it. Uh, I, don't, I can't go through each line, but uh, just read it. It's very easy to read. Uh, and we have already done this first easy example. Now, when you start playing with that, you say, oh, it would be nice to have clustering. Oh, it would be nice to have filters on it. Oh, it would be nice to add custom fields in the tooltip or the intro text or the intro image. So basically all I'm doing now, and I can go quickly because it's not the idea of um, going through too many lines of code, but it's every time to improve a little bit. So when you want clustering, actually what happens if you go and have a look at the code is that you have to add a few extra lines um, to um, for the CSS and some JavaScript, uh, which takes care of this clustering. And then actually the rest of the code is almost identical. Uh, the only thing that we change is that, okay, instead of adding each point to the map, we add them, uh, each coordinate to the map, we add them to uh, some, some cluster group. Uh, and so at the end, we add the whole thing, right? The, uh, the whole cluster group. But basically, the, the code is exactly the same, just a few extra lines of code, and then we have uh, clustering. The intermediate version was uh, this one, where we wanted to, to have different map markers for different categories, right? So what does it change exactly to, uh, what does it take to have that? Uh, there was this example on the leaflet.js website that I showed. Um, 
So actually, I'm just creating a variable to say, okay, I want a JEX icon and it will be this image, this SVG image I've put in the images folder, right? The Joomla days icon, and I've even made a, a third one just for testing reasons. Uh, but okay, basically all we add on the previous code is this. And then of course, for each point, when we add each coordinate, um, well, there is an extra something somewhere. All right, there is an extra option here. We add the coordinates, we add the tooltip after, but right in the middle, we just say that we want an icon and the icon, well, in my case, uh, I want it to be smart. So actually, um, to make it easy, I use the category alias as the name of my image, as my, uh, the name of my SVG file, right? So my SVG file. So that is why I call that uh, Joomla Day um, icon, JEX icon, because I wanted to use the uh, category alias so that it was very easy without much coding to, to have that, right? Um, so yeah. And that's it. We have the intermediate uh, map. Then the last map advanced, uh, again, it's only a few extra lines of code. So if we want to have clustering and also filters, well, I'll show the result. Read that, Oops, yeah. Read that for yourself. But uh, it's just a few lines of code and that, we, that we add again to um, to improve it. Okay. So this case is a bit longer. That's why I wanted to start with the easy case so that you're not uh, saying, <gasps> this is too complicated. Because it's not. Okay, it's because we have added many features. We have added four or five features on the basic map. So, uh, but uh, as such, it is not uh, that difficult. So, um, before the questions, I wanted to thank a few people. First, Philippe Combe, who first came to me with this custom fields module ID. Uh, that I wanted them to, um, to formalize into this presentation. Um, the trick to integrate custom fields in any override, even when the code does not foresee it. Uh, thank you to Alexandre Elise for the clustering and the layers, because uh, I, I was no expert. It was my very first experience with maps. So for clustering, I had no clue how to make it uh, in an easy way. So uh, Philippe Lambert from my Joomla user group uh, in Belgium helped me with that. And, uh, well, of course, I wanted to thank the people who have worked on custom field, open street map custom field. So Tassos, Adrien, uh, and Fabrice, uh, respectively. For being J positive, I want to thank so many members of the Joomla community. Um, and if you want, if you have any suggestion of improvement or anything, uh, feel free to contact me. So the slides are available on slides.quadrivet.be. Uh, you have here my Twitter handle, my phone number, mobile phone number, so WhatsApp as well, uh, my landline, and my website. And uh, besides this uh, slides.quadrivet.be, uh, there are also other presentations on, on the slide share. So um, this is it. Uh, we managed to do it, this famous map showing um, all our articles on the map with clustering, with customized images, with different uh, images for each category and with a, with a filter. So yeah, um, are there any questions? David, are you there? Yes, I'm here oh. monitoring the chat. Uh, people asking me, uh, to, uh, to to not stop you, give you any time you need uh, because the topic is that interesting. Um, however, you apparently not only have an interesting topic, but also have really good explanation skills because I haven't seen any questions so far, just tons of positive feedback. Um, I assume you'll be around in the chat for another couple of minutes if any questions occur? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. Because and we any are time, of course, my coordinates are in the presentation, so anytime people can contact me. Awesome. If it's about custom fees, I, 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 I can spend a lot of time. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 the same for us. Uh, we we pretty much in, in our shop, uh, we we pretty much stopped using any third party extensions because of the combination yeah. of overrides and custom fields. Um, things that you required a component in the past for is now just on on board. Just a couple of lines of PHP, some CSS, some HTML, and you're ready to go. Yeah, and it makes maintenance easier as well. A lot, uh, yeah. So and I'm very grateful to, uh, I say it again, to Alan Moritz, the father of custom trees, because uh, it's really a huge improvement of Joomla, because I yeah. think that without custom trees today, I would have to quit, because if it's just to create a website with an article title, an article content, and, a, and an image, well, not anybody could do that, but I mean, uh, here with custom trees, you can really build advanced things uh, and very easily thanks to Joomla and, and, and those custom fields. So uh, we 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 bring added value thanks to you, those custom fields. Yes, that's, that stuff becomes reusable. That's the thing that that I like about them. Those custom fields most. If you have the the very same content item being outputted, for example, in a in a block view and in a detail view, and if you split those those items into different fields, you can completely rearrange the output and do whatever with it whatever you you need something that would be impossible with just using uh and what you see is what you get editor yeah and if people are interested in more if no question is coming uh so i i've already started a series in the joomla community magazine the magazine.joomla.org so there are already four articles in this series about custom trees trying to explain everything for uh at different levels uh so even for newbies um so and i'm preparing uh, the next articles right now so uh the series is not finished so yeah get back to me if you have any suggestion about the simple question and i'll be pleased to answer awesome can you share the links to those articles in the chat um yeah uh i'll, I'll do that awesome. uh it was in the presentation somewhere uh the, the latest one was in the presentation. Okay. Because I'm also gathering a list of all the custom fields that I've come across. Like here, only for OpenStreetMap, I had found yeah. three, but there are so many different yeah. types. Yeah, so it's very interesting to gather all extensions being compatible with custom fields. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was uh, inspiring and, uh, and yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I wish you a good afternoon. We're doing a short three minute break uh, and then we are back uh, again on the stream uh, with uh, Davide Messia and uh, the, his story, what Joomla community and banana pizza have in common. Um, I'm curious to find out. Uh, see you in a couple of minutes back. Okay, and thank you for your involvement, the whole uh, JMB on team for uh, organizing this and for uh, animating also the Joomla community. You are very welcome. We enjoy it. We learn so much from each other. <laughs> True. Okay, so see you in a couple of minutes, guys. Yes, sure. Bye.